we hope. So if anyone is watching us live, welcome. If you're not watching us live and you're watching this as a recording, get up earlier and join us. Uh, but it is nice to see you. This is only our second in-person services. Uh, so we're still kind of sorting out and getting used to the, the different environment that we now inhabit. Uh, so we're all a bit on edge, but we're, we're getting there. Um, some bits of, of news we, we want to share just to try and, and make us aware of what's ha happening in the broader church family. Doreen's with us with, with a new knee. <laughs> so us. And we hope your recovery is maybe not as quick as you would like, but quick. Uh, Bert, who I don't know if Bert is with us. See, you're all sitting in different places. I can't work out where everybody is. I don't think Bert's with us today. Uh, but Bert will be 90. Uh, <laughs> not next week, but just at the week after. So, uh, quite a landmark. So, we, we wish him well as he approaches such a significant birthday. Um, and I think that's all. Apart from having to clarify what's happening next week, we had hoped to do an act of remembrance at the War Memorial. Um, for 11 o'clock next week. However, the regulations that have come out on the tiering system means that outside gatherings are not permitted in tier 3 or in tier 2. So we can't, even if we get put down to tier 2, which we should be given levels, but anyway, that's another argument, um, we still wouldn't be able to do it until we get down to tier 1. So next week's service will be at 10.30 in the church as normal, but at just before 11 o'clock I'm going to go over and say the words of remembrance at the memorial in the late hour wreath, uh, and at least we will acknowledge that time and that moment uh, in our uh, thinking and in, in our church year. And I think that's all the notices unless anybody else wants to remind me of something I've forgot. Magazine, 15th of November, 11th? Uh, we'll say the 11th. <laughs> couple, we'll, we'll err on the side of caution. Uh, that sounds a familiar phrase. A couple phrase. of weeks from now, uh, articles. Articles for the, the, the next edition of the magazine. Um, please to Scott by the 11th. All news, group news, even if you're suspended because of circumstances, uh, we will take whatever people wish to offer. Uh, and look to reflect that in our magazine by the 11th, please. Thank you. I think that's all our notices. Uh, so with that, let's just take a moment in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly and loving Father, we gather in strange and unusual circumstances. They don't quite feel normal. Don't quite feel right. But what is right? is that we bring you our praise and our worship, however we are permitted so to do. And so even if we can't sing with our lips, we sing in our hearts and in our heads of your praise and your glory. We gather in fellowship, one with each other, even if we can't be close to one another. Physically, we can be close to each other spiritually. And so in our gathering, hold us in your embrace. Hold us together. Receive the praises of our thoughts and our hearts. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And Ian is going to share with us a reading in a moment. But I'm going to invite him to come up. He doesn't know this yet. But I'm going to invite him to come up to, this, to, to the front. I'm just going to make sure you're in. Oh, you're in shot. That's fine. Let's just make sure we're two metres apart. That's, that's fine. Okay, good to go. Are you on? I am. Right, so Ian started with us last week on, on a formation placement for approximately six months as someone moving towards ordained local ministry. So, Ian. What's your understanding of our being local ministry? Because they don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still figuring it out, to be honest. Um, but I was working for Presbytery 
uh, Stirling Presbytery, I believe, once, uh, once I'm ordained, once I'm through my studies and through my placements and everything. Uh, so we'll be sent where the need is greatest. Why ministry? Why, why this calling at this time in your life? Because I know you're busy, you've got a family, you have work, and now you're adding this on top of it. Why? I ask myself that every morning. <laughs> um, no, I, I, felt, I, I felt a calling uh, to ministry on my life for, for a long time now. I, I graduated uh, university back when I was 21 uh, down in London. I kind of, it started then, but I always felt I was too young. Um, nobody would listen to me at 21. Um, Don't worry, they didn't listen to you. Anymore. No, they didn't listen to you. Um, but yes, yeah, certainly since then, uh, there's been a lot, I've been, I've been worshipping in Balfour Church and there's been a lot happening in Balfour Church over the last few years and it's put me in a position where I was being called upon to, to step up and actually use my training uh, for what it was. Um, and that was really where God prompted, it's now, I want you to do this. So, just responding to that. Okay, well, we look forward to finding out more about you over the weeks and months ahead, but that just gives them a little bit of insight into why you're here. So with that, I'm going to hand over to you and let you lead our reading today. The reading this morning is from Matthew 6, verses 16 to 34. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their face to show men that they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will, it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If the eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either way, he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It's life is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your Father in heaven feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow, they do not labour or spin. And yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. Thank you. As we reflect on what we have just heard, we're going to invite Helen to, to play something for us. Thank mm -hmm. you.
traditional harvest theme of bringing in the produce and product of the land. We're going to continue harvesting as a theme up until Advent, but looking at different aspects. Today, the, the harvest or the reward of faithfulness. In our reading, we are offered a whole set of contrasts, comparisons with what we might expect to be important and corrective teaching that Jesus seeks to impart. If you read through scripture, you'll find that he does this quite often. He will often say, you say, or it is said, or you have heard, but I say. He does this compare and contrast, puts two images before us, and then invites us to make a choice, to pick one or the other, because you can't have both. I think when we reflect on our society today, we know we are in very much a consumer driven culture. Fashions change regularly to compel us to shop, to buy, to consume. But Jesus never said, Blessed are the shoppers, for they shall be happy. Because three months down the road, the fashions will have changed and you'll be back in the shops looking to, to refresh your wardrobe. Last week we briefly thought about our relationship with the world we inhabit and how we might need to readjust that to become better stewards of this wonderful gift of God's creation. But our response, not only to the world, but to our lifestyle, needs maybe a little further scrutiny. If we seek to walk faithfully with God, we have to take what Jesus taught seriously. That we may have to review our habits so that we can be sure that we are living under the blessing of our Heavenly Father. But rather than list a whole set of legal do's and don'ts that the law did, Jesus sets out principles that we can apply more broadly to our range of circumstances that we may encounter. So whether in our modern culture we can say they didn't have this issue in Bible times, we have principles that we can apply irrespective of the time, irrespective of the culture. The example of our reading has echoes for today. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? The shops are shut. The restaurants are shut. The pubs are closed. And there's panic in the streets. The prevailing pandemic has had a huge impact on all of our lives. On our lifestyles, our, our default choices. Restaurants and cafes and pubs are all shut or closing early. Under full lockdown, shops will shut. We're all aware of the announcement that was made yesterday uh, on the BBC about what's happening south of the border. And you know, we might criticise the Scottish Government, but we're not at that point yet, so just Let's all behave and we might not have to go down that road. This seems to cause a deal of bemusement. As if people don't know what to do with a life that doesn't allow them to go out for a meal. Or a drink. Or to spend money. Spend that we don't really need to incur. We have become habituated into that cycle of consumerism. So many have put their trust in the everyday routines, the casual consumerism that dominates a life. The first thing that the national government does on releasing lockdown last time was what? To encourage us to go out and shop. We'll give you a discount on food. Get back into the restaurants. Buy one meal. Get one free. 
And suddenly we're back in a spike again. Really? Okay. Many believe that they will find fulfillment in the consumerism that the world offers. They find fulfillment in spending their money on the things they wear and eat and drink. But Jesus offers us something different. Your father knows what you need, said Jesus. We need to eat. Yes, we know that. We need to replace things in our life, in our wardrobe, when they wear out. He points to this wonderful creation we inhabit. Look at the wardrobe of the world around you. And we think a new top, a new outfit will make us look new. Your father knows what you need. Creation doesn't have a cafe culture, but they're fed. Your father knows what you need. Creation doesn't have a designer fashion outlets. And yet look at the beauty that surrounds us. Your father knows what you need. What is the cost of this provision? It's not on our credit card bills. It's not on our bank balances. Jesus said, seek his kingdom. His righteousness. That's the, the harvest of faithfulness. To seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Seeking to live out kingdom values. And it pulls us into his being into his nature, into his righteousness. And we are robed in his garments. We are fed from his table. And he knows what we need. The principle I see behind this is a choosing. Choosing between going with the world's view on one hand or going with God's. When the world says there is nothing that can be done about feeding the poor or the division between rich and poor, what does God say? When society says that there is nothing that can be done about homelessness, what does God say? When society puts on the sad face when abuse is uncovered, what face would God have? Sad or angry? Putting God's kingdom first will mean that we often have to have different values, different priorities in our lives and not simply hide, camouflaged in the crowd. We fear what the world might say about us or think about us. Right enough, they will hate people who speak truth to power. They will hate people who stand up for the broken and the unheard. They will hate people who feed the hungry and clothe the naked. They will hate people who tend to sick. Really? When this transient monetary world passes and the eternal world of God resounds in and throughout creation, what will he say to us? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Or, I don't know you. After that, then, we'll take a bit more time uh, and look at a more practical approach to this theme. How we can embody uh, this approach in our lives, but that's for a little further down the road. But for now, we would do well to reflect on the promise that we will reap the harvest of our faithfulness. And how we tend to it will determine if we bring in a great yield or just a few grains. So if your Heavenly Father knows what you need, do you ask Him for it? Or do we just carry on by it? Do we just bemoan the fact that 
places that are closed? Or do we go to his open house? Where there are no restrictions on how many can be in his presence. What principles of kingdom living do we need to think about for us today? And as we reflect on what this harvest of faithfulness might mean for us, for each of us, I'm going to invite Helen to play. Now last week we did say you can't sin, and unfortunately that is still the rule. However, there's nothing to stop you from humming behind your mask. If you want to hum along, I won't tell anybody. Father God, hear our prayers for ourselves and for others. Look with mercy upon us and remember that we are but dust. Remember, Lord, that you declare yourself to be the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Look upon us, O oh Lord, upon your church, upon your community, upon this nation and, and this world, in your compassion and love, and forgive us for all our wrongdoing, for all our sins against you and against each other. We lament the 
situation that we find ourselves in today, Father. Our families, our communities, the whole earth groans under this virus. Our bodies, minds and spirits have felt its impact. Some folk more than others. Some grieve. Some are in physical pain. Others in deep depression and loneliness. See us, O oh Lord, and remember your people. You have told us that you cannot forget us. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. In your mercy, Lord, hear our cry as we bring before you, in the silent prayers of our hearts, those we know and those we feel burdened for at this time. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. What a faithful God have we. What a faithful God. You delight to hear our prayers. Your answers, though sometimes difficult for us, are good. You are good. We pray for our own governments, local and national, for the wise and good voices amongst our leaders to be strong and heard. We pray for all those who serve us in our communities, that we would dignify and value the services of all equally. We pray for those who have no jobs and feel that they are hidden from and forgotten by society. O oh God of light and hope, shine hope into their lives this week through the kind gesture of a friend or a stranger or through some surprising turn of events. We pray for all those affected by the earthquake in Turkey, that the living may be rescued, that the injured may be healed, that the homeless may find shelter. We pray for those directly affected by violence this week, including in the French terrorist attack in Nice, the stabbings in Lyon and Quebec. We pray for those injured and the families of those murdered, for all their governments to be wise in their response, and for the terrorists involved and others like them who feel the need to use violence often to defend a religious cause. Cause them to put down their weapons and to really get to know you, our God, who needs no man to defend him who is sovereign over all, who commands us to love others as ourselves. We pray for our church, that you will equip us to be your church across this nation and specifically in this community. We pray for Stuart and the elders, that they might be anointed by your Holy Spirit with a vision for this part of the body of Christ that they might be the servant leaders that you have called them to be in this place, releasing your Holy Spirit to build your church here, in Killeen and beyond. We pray for Ian. Thank you for sending him to us for these next six months. Let us be open to the new words, ideas and thoughts he brings from you and help us to serve him in his journey to do your will in his life. Oh, Father God, help us not to settle for the comfortable and the ordinary when we have access to all the powers of heaven to see your kingdom come here on earth. And for this we pray in the words that Jesus taught us saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and even forevermore.